Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. If you've ever had trouble motion tracking in After Effects, well, you're not alone. While I love After Effects, I find that one of its weaker points is its tracking system. The big problem is that After Effects uses a pixel-based tracking system, meaning that it's tracking individual pixels. The problem with a system like that is that if those pixels are obscured, such as maybe the object you're tracking moves off the screen, or if those pixels become distorted, such as you might get from motion blur or video noise, After Effects will fail in its track. And yes, while you can manually adjust the track, it doesn't always work, and when it does, it's still pretty time consuming. Recently, though, I saw a motion tracking system called Mocha from Imagineer Systems that really blew my mind because it was able to easily track things that After Effects could not. It uses Imagineer's 2.5D planar tracking system where it determines, based on how you set things up, where there are flat planes. This system is a lot more accurate than a standard pixel-based motion tracker, and the best part about it, at least as far as the work that I do is concerned, is that Mocha can hand off that motion tracking data directly to After Effects, among other compositing applications. The thing is, and I'm speaking from experience here, Mocha can be pretty intimidating to After Effects users because, well, it's not After Effects. It looks different, and it feels different, and if you're trying to save time on a project, learning a new application is not usually an option. However, it's really not that hard to get the basics down, and the workflow from Mocha to After Effects is pretty simple. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of performing a track and getting the data over to After Effects. To work with me, you can download the free trial software at www.imagineersoftware.com, and the footage is available along with this video. So, here I am in Mocha with the interface open, but no project. If you start up Mocha yourself, you'll see a darker version of this interface. I went into the preferences by choosing File, Preferences, and then I went into the System tab and set it to Light instead of Dark. Click OK to get out of that. OK, let's get this party started. Hit the Create New Project button to start a new project. This will open up the new project wizard. Next, click on this Open Folder icon to navigate and import the clip you plan on tracking. In this case, I'm using a PNG image sequence, although you can use many different movie and image sequence formats. Once you've selected your file, click Open. This brings us back into the new project wizard. Next, set a name for the project file. I'll call this Computer. Below that, I'll set this from Relative Path to Absolute Path. This allows me to choose the location for saving my files. Otherwise, Mocha will save it in a directory of its choosing. Next, I'll choose where to save the file by clicking on this Open Folder icon. For simplicity's sake, I'll just save it to my desktop. I'll click OK to get back to the wizard and then I'll click Next to move into the next part of the dialog. In this section of the wizard, it's verifying some of the footage attributes, such as the length of the footage and its dimensions. All of this looks good, so I'll click Next. In the Next section, this is where you would tell Mocha how to deal with your footage. If it were interlaced video, you would turn on Separate Fields and then choose which option was appropriate. In my case, the footage is progressive, that is, it's not interlaced. So we'll just leave the separate fields turned off. The one thing I want to change here is the frames per second. By default, Mocha is assuming 24 frames per second, but in fact, the footage was shot at 30 frames per second. So from the pull down, I'll set it to 30. Then I'll click Finish. OK, that brings us into the interface with our video. This is a video of my laptop, and while it does have a wide screen, it's not quite that wide. The footage is clearly being distorted. We need to fix that. So, down here in the Clip tab, under the Film sub-tab, change the Pixel Aspect Ratio interpretation from HD to NTSC. OK, that looks much better. Now let's take a quick look at the footage. I'll hit Play. And as you can see, this is not the best piece of footage for tracking. It was shot on my Sony CyberShot camera, which is a consumer-grade still camera that can record video, though not too well. The shot is shaky, it goes out of focus, and has motion blur and some grainy video noise. These are all issues that make for a very difficult track. If that wasn't enough, we've got bigger problems. 
In case you haven't guessed, I intend to do a four point track for corner pinning video onto the computer screen. The big problem here is that the upper corners of the computer screen move out of the camera range, meaning they go off the screen. Now this has gone from being a difficult track to extremely difficult and time consuming, if not entirely impossible. At least that would be the case if we were using a normal motion tracker. However, with Mocha, things are a bit different. Since Mocha doesn't rely on individual pixels for motion tracking, the rules have changed a bit. So let's move into the track tab and set up our track. First, if you're not already there, move to the first frame of our video. Actually, you can start your track at any frame. I just want to start it from frame one. Okay, let's mark off the area that will be tracked using the X spline layer tool up here. In our video window, I'll create a relatively loose boundary around the screen of my laptop, clicking to add points. Now, this could be done with as little as four points, but I don't want this boundary to be so loose that the tracker gets confused by the outer elements. You see, what we're doing here is creating a garbage mat, which tells the program what elements to exclude without being too precise. You have to find a nice balance between loose and tight here, and that's because the program uses edge detection in its tracking process, and we want to make sure that those edges get included, but don't want to include too much else. By the way, a right click will end the creation of this garbage mat. Now a problem that I'm seeing with this footage is that there's a reflection in the laptop screen. The reason that this is a problem is because the depth of that reflection, along with the shifting image as the camera moves, may confuse the planar tracking system. So we need to exclude the actual screen in the track. No big deal. I'll use the Add X-Spline tool up here to create a new spline that excludes the screen in the track. In this case, I want to create a very tight mat, so I'll only create four points. Now these points are being created as bezier, meaning that they are curved. So we're going to have to adjust them after we create the mat. Once you're done creating the mat, select any one of the corner points and then right click on it and from the pop-up, choose selection, select all in spline. This selects every point in this inner mat. Then grab hold of the tangent, that's this blue handle, and pull it out, which as you can see, creates tight corners on the spline. Now just make sure that each corner is exactly where it needs to be. You can grab hold and move them individually. And as you do, you'll see that a zoom window appears, which will allow you to see exactly where you are placing the corner point. Anyway, when you're done with that, you can see exactly what area of the video will be analyzed in the track by hitting the mats button up here in the view controls. As you can see, the screen is being ignored and only the area highlighted in red will be tracked. Okay, let's just turn that off. We're just about ready to do our track, but we want to turn on one more option. Down here in the motion section, we want to make sure to tell Mocha to track the perspective. So make sure to check that option. Next, let's get this track started. Hit the track forward button right here in the timeline and let Mocha do the hard work. Now Mocha will chug along for a bit, but not too long compared to other trackers. When it's done, if you play it back, you'll have a good, if not perfect track. Mocha barely batted an eyelash as it encountered all of the issues that I mentioned earlier. There are a few places where the track got a bit messed up, but those are easily fixable. We'll get to that soon enough, but first let's set up our surface. In other words, we need to set up the corner points for our corner pin effect. And to do that, we set up the surface that will be used to pin the video. To be clear, the four points we used in creating this inner mat has absolutely nothing to do with our corner pin effect. This was just for the purposes of blocking out the contents of the screen so that the track would not get messed up by the reflection. It just so happens that in this case, we want to pin our video or image on the same four corners. But if there were no reflection here, we wouldn't have had to create the inner mat to begin with. We would have just tracked it with this outer garbage mat. So again, at this point, all we've done is track the video, but we haven't yet set up the surface for our corner pin effect. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the first frame of my video and then in the view controls, I'll choose to show my surface by clicking on the surface button. As you can see, we have a blue outline to indicate the surface. 
So I'll grab hold of each surface corner and I'll place it where I want the corners of my four corner pin effect to be. Again, in this case, they will be in the exact same spots as my inner mats corners. When you're done setting that up, you can get a look at how the track is being interpreted in terms of a plane. In the view controls, click on the grid button to see a grid which represents the plane. Hit play and you can really see that it's done a phenomenal job. Just so you know, the grid is only a visual tool for helping you see the track. It doesn't actually do anything. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Cool. Furthermore, you can even preview an image or video on the surface to get a really clear idea of how the track has worked out. In the Layer Properties panel, up here on the left, using the Insert Clip pull-down, you can choose to import a video clip or use the Mocha logo or a checkerboard grid. I'll go with the checkerboard grid. Okay, a quick playback reveals a very nice track, but with a few spots where things have gone slightly awry. Let's fix those, shall we? For now, I'm going to turn off my grid, and then I'll jump over to the Adjust Track tab. Now, from watching the video, it looks to me like my last good tracking frame was frame 30. So I'll move to frame 30 in the timeline, and then I'll click on this button called Set Master All, which sets a master keyframe for every corner point. As you can see from this green dot, a keyframe has been added. I'm going to jump down in time to about frame 115, where the motion starts to slow down a bit. It seems like a good place to make a new keyframe. Now, I'll select this upper right corner, and as you can see, I get two zoom windows, one showing where the corner point was on the master frame and one showing where it currently resides. That's quite a difference. Now I can move the corner point by hand, which will work fine, but in some cases you can have Mocha try and fix it by having it analyze the pixels. To do that, hit this auto button. It may work. If it doesn't, you can always adjust it by hand. Anyway, once you make a change, a keyframe is automatically added. If you decide you want to get rid of a keyframe later, you can just choose the delete key button here to do that. Anyway, I have a little more of the same type of work to do here along the timeline for at least one more of the corner points. So I'll flash forward in time a bit to where I've created my keyframes and adjusted the animation. So you understand what this adjustment is about. Think about motion tracking in other software. Most motion trackers create a keyframe for every single frame of the track. So if you adjust any of the track points, you're only adjusting it for that frame. This can create very jerky animation because the frame before and the frame after the adjustment have not changed. However, by using these adjustment tools, Mocha isn't just changing the one frame. It's interpolating the changes you've made to account for the drift of the corner point. The end result is a smooth adjustment to the track that looks natural. Anyway, at this point, you can bring the checkerboard grid back to see how things look. And if you're satisfied, then it's time to send this over to After Effects. This is probably the easiest part of the process. Making sure that you are in the Adjust Track tab here, click on the Export Tracking Data button. This brings up a dialog where we can choose what format of data we want to use. There are a lot of options here, including After Effects Transform Data, which you would use if, for example, you were doing stabilization for some shaky footage. In our case, from the pull-down, we'll choose After Effects Corner Pin Data. Then you can choose to save the data as a text file, or you can just copy it to the clipboard, which is what I'll do. Then, I'll jump into After Effects, where I have my computer footage and the footage that I intend to use for the screen already imported and in a composition. Then I'll make sure that I'm on the first frame of my composition, and I'll select my screen footage, and then I'll choose Edit, Paste which pastes the corner pin data onto the layer, which by the way includes adding the perspective corner pin effect as well. Okay, clearly this is not a perfect match. The video and the screen are not lining up, and there's a good reason for that. The screen footage is not the same size as the composition, and that means that its anchor point, or center point, has a different value than the composition's. That can throw off the corner pin effect in a case like this, and this is an issue with After Effects, not Mocha. The most ideal solution is to simply set the anchor point of our screen video footage to the composition center point, which in the case of this 640 by 480 sized composition is 320 by 240. So with the video footage selected, 
hit A to reveal its anchor point and then set the anchor point to 320 by 240. And there you go. There are a few other ways to handle this, such as moving the video by hand and lining it up, which works fine, or a more complicated method of pre-composing this screen video in a composition the same size as the main composition and then stretching it out to fill the composition dimensions and then using this pre-composition nested in the main composition as the screen video. Now since the video and the composition have the same dimensions, the anchor points will match perfectly. The end result being that the corner pin data will work perfectly when it's pasted onto the layer. But again, in this case, simply adjusting the anchor point works perfectly. Some important notes. The reason I said to make sure that you are on the first frame of the composition is that After Effects paste the keyframes wherever you are in time. So if I were on a later frame, After Effects would paste the corner pin data starting from that point in time, which wouldn't match with the video. Also, my laptop monitor has a widescreen resolution, and because of that, whatever element I want to composite on there needs to be set up with a similar aspect ratio, meaning I have to make sure that the video is a proportional match to the screen, otherwise things get stretched and look weird when the video is pinned. So make sure to consider that when setting things up. Anyway, to kick this up a few notches, I'm going to set the corner pin video's transfer mode to screen. This allows the highlights and reflections from the monitor to be included, giving some extra realism. A quick RAM preview, and we have something which, if not perfect, is about as close to perfect a composite as one could expect given that the background footage is often motion blurred and out of focus, and that we've done nothing other than corner pinning it to make it work. If you're willing to spend some time playing with different blur effects, you can probably make the screen an even better match with the background video. I got you this far, which I think is pretty far along in the process, but the rest of my friends is up to you. Keep in mind that if you film with a more appropriate camera, and by that I mean a camera that's actually designed to film video and that lets you turn off the autofocus, and you think a little bit about the shot before you film it, you can get significantly better results. Personally, I've avoided taking motion tracking work because I couldn't rely on After Effects' motion tracker on difficult shots like this. Having a tool like Mocha means I can take more complex and challenging work without sweating whether or not I can actually get the job done. One last thing before I go. I just want to mention that Mocha also has some powerful rotoscoping tools that uses the same planar tracking technology, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. That's all for now. I hope to see you in the After Effects forum and the new Imagineer Software forum here at Creative Cow. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.